problem that we've looked at in the past. So we had this earlier and we did this uh, analytically uh, by kind of using a little bit of some of our wonderful knowledge here. But as you can see, we're going to try to find the limit of the function uh, x to the third minus 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1. Now, uh, when you graph this, as you can see, we had a hole. And unfortunately, direct substitution does not allow us to plug in 1, because what you're going to end up with is 0 over 0. And that, of course, is undefined, so that doesn't really help us out. So what we'd really like to do is we'd really like to manipulate our function so that we have something that we can use direct substitution uh, with. Well, here comes the manipulation process. Well, how can we manipulate that? Well, a little part of you, your background knowledge should be tingling right now and saying, ah, oh, man, we've dealt with stuff like that before. So we're trying to rewrite this so that we can use direct substitution. And I'm sure you're thinking right now, boy, I think I remember stuff like this. And what we're going to do is we're basically just going to factor. So we're going to try to factor it. Uh, the top, oh my gosh, again, the reminder, all those things you learned before you need to know now uh, is difference of cubes. So it's the cube root of the first term, so the cube root of x to the third is x. The cube root of the negative 1 is negative 1. Then I'm going to take this x and square it to get the first term of the trinomial. Uh, multiply these two together and change the sign to get the middle term of the trinomial. And lastly, square negative 1 to get the third term of the trinomial. So if you don't remember it, go back and look it up. And the benefit of us factoring is now those two things will cancel. So it's going to leave us the limit of x squared plus x plus 1 as x approaches 1. Well, now uh, we took this original function and we just rewrote re it. And then now the graph of this actually looks like this. So instead of having this hole in our function, now we've represented it with a function that is defined at that spot. So now it becomes easy. All we have to do is use a little direct substitution, and it allows us to come up with our limit. And if you go back and look at your notes, you should see that that's the exact same limit that we did uh, analytically. So here's some nice little strategies for us. Strategies for finding limits. Uh, learn to recognize which limits can be evaluated by direct substitution. Uh, if the limit of f of x as x approaches c cannot be evaluated by direct substitution, try to find a function g that agrees with f for all x other than x equal to c. So that's what we did in the last one. We rewrote our original function with a function that is the same function except for that one little spot. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to choose uh, g such that the limit of g of x can be evaluated by direct substitution. Apply theorem 2.7 to conclude analytically that uh, f, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to the limit of g of x as g approaches c, and then just use direct substitution, and then use a grapher table to reinforce your conclusion. All right, and then of course, breaking it down a little bit on what we actually need to do. Number two, the methods we're going to try to divide out, or in other words, in more simple terms, we're going to try to factor, or we're going to be talking about rationalizing. So it may be a little while since you've seen that stuff, so we're going to make sure we do some examples.